Well, good morning. Evening, afternoon, late night, mid-morning, breakfast time, dinner time, snack time, whenever you should be finding or watching this, uh, I just wanted to uh, start off by saying hello to you. And um, this is, I believe, this year's version of Praise with the Pros. Or this is a <laughs> just great opportunity to be with one another and fellowship uh, for a little bit. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Greg Scruggs. I am the uh, son of Craig and Anita. Uh, most importantly, I'm a son of God and uh, the adopted son of Ann and Bob, if you will. Uh, but uh, I'm a former player. Uh, born and raised here in the or in the great uh, Midwest, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, some of you know me, and if you don't, welcome. Uh, I play for the Seahawks and for the Bears and for the Patriots. Uh, however, you may feel about them uh, where you are, but uh, it was a great experience, a great time. But uh, that led me here. That led me to uh, pro football camp, and in lieu of praise with the pros uh, in person. Here we are, and this is just a time where we share with one another, and this is just a time where we fellowship together. Uh, I share my testimony, um, or a testimony I have for you, and then we go on about our days. So, if that's good by you, we'll be together for the next two and a half hours, three hours, uh, virtually, um, if you will, and we'll make it shake. Good, thumbs up if you're good with that. You good with the three hours? Good. Kidding. Sit here for three hours if you want to. I won't be here. So, no, we seriously, about 15, 20 minutes, uh, we'll just share my testimony. Something unique happened to me, and uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, as with everything, I'd like to start with a prayer and be able to pray for you guys. So, uh, wherever you're watching, if you could just bow your head, and we'll talk for a little bit. Dear God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for the people uh, who are on the other end of this camera. I thank you for the people on the other end of this microphone. Will you use me in this time, Lord, to uh, to speak life into somebody who may need to hear it? Use me to pray for somebody. Use me as a messenger of your word, a teller of your truth, and a believer of faith. God, I thank you so much for the people in this world. And for those who are less fortunate than us, we ask that you continue to bless them and keep their eyes set on you. Allow us to fellowship, rejoice, and have a good time in this moment. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So I was raised to not wear a hat in church. When you showed up at church, you put on uh, good clothes. I grew up Southern Baptist, and you put on your nice clothes. It was in reverence and respect uh, to Christ. Joke's on you. I ain't in church, so I'm wearing my hat. <laughs> I'm wearing my hat and my shirt of my employer. So, uh you got an issue with it. That's between you and God. All right. We got much bigger problems than that. But I want to start today uh, with uh, a reading the scripture. Let's start with Isaiah chapter 43, um, verse 2. When you have it, say amen. Amen. That was quick because it's virtual, so you can pause it if you need to. Or whoever's running the video. Get it. So Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Actually, let's just start at verse 1. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you my name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Verse 5 says this, Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children. From the east and the west, I will say to the north and I will say to the south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. 
I, I kind of titled this, I'm here. All right, I'm here. And so what we see going on in the scripture now, I must give the disclaimer, I'm not a pastor, ordained pastor, except for through worldlifechurch.org. But outside of being ordained by worldlifechurch.org, I am not a pastor. I am simply a believer with a testimony. And I want to make that abundantly clear to everybody here. But my understanding and interpretation of the text and the New Living Translation of Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 7 is that there are people somewhere along this way um, who have gotten fear. And somewhere along the way they have forgotten or they have been so consumed with this turmoil that is seemingly happening that they've forgotten who has protected them. And so I titled this, I'm here to make sure that we are reminded of where he is. So the other day, uh, I was going to be with my son. My son lives in a completely different state. Well, neighboring states, not too far away. I was going to go visit my son and we were going to spend the day together. Great day. I had a plan. We wake up, I pick him up. We go to the pre favorite breakfast place that we always go to. We've been going to since he was a kid and we have a great breakfast. And then we're going to go shop for RC cars. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever shopped for an RC car. I have a hard time, I should say, paying $250 for a car, okay, let alone a remote control car. And not to mention that the remote control car that he wanted me to pay for couldn't even go on grass. So needless to say, we had a great time playing with RC cars in the store. We ended up in the Hot Wheel aisle at uh, Kmart, okay, just so we're on the same page. Nonetheless, we had a great time at the RC store, RC car store. And uh, then it kind of rained on our parade. It literally started raining. I, that wasn't a figurative statement. It literally started raining. So we took a nap and we wake up and I was supposed to leave. And he asked me if I would come. Um, you know, they were, there was going to be a cookout. We, we come to the cookout. Absolutely, buddy. Let's go. So we go to the family cookout and we hang out and he and I are having a great time. We're riding a bike. He's showing me an RC car. He's showing me his uncle's mom. We're having a great time, really enjoying it. Uh, and then it again became time to have to go. And he said, will you just, will you just uh, eat, eat with me? Absolutely, son. Uh, yeah, no problem. So uh, we sit down. I sit next to him. We have some food. We have a good meal and, uh, uh, we go back outside as, the, as soon as he's finished eating. I say, okay, buddy, daddy's really got to go. You know, daddy's, daddy's really got to go, and that's that. And he immediately gets sad. And it was bothersome to me, but, you know, this is, you know, this is the way that we live. And so I, I get ready to leave, and he says, well, daddy, can I walk you, can I walk you to your car? Absolutely, son, let's go. And so we go hand in hand, and uh, here it is right here. Uh, we go hand in hand and we get to walk into the car. And as I'm getting ready to leave, he gives me a hug and he looks at me and uh, he says, well, can you come back? I said, absolutely, I'll be back. That's no problem. He says, well, make sure you don't take too long. Make sure you don't take too long to come back. And he drops his head and he walks away. And I said, okay, buddy, I, I promise I'll be back. I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere, but I'll be back. And so I go to... Uh, get in the car and he's walking away and uh, mom says, you know, we can watch from the porch and he turns around and he runs back to me and he grabs me again and gives me a hug and I pick him up and I say, son, I got you. I'm not going anywhere. I promise you that I'll be back. And so uh, I drop him and he walks back over, sadly walks back over. I get in the car and I get about four or five minutes down the road and I have to pull over uh, because I'm so overcome with emotion um, that my son is sad and I'm just sad because I don't, I didn't want to leave him at the time, but I had to and I'm overcome with emotion and I can't take it and I ended up calling my mother and it was a great conversation. But what that moment did or said to me or what that moment was for me was kind of a microcosm of sometimes how we feel in life about Christ, about where he is. Because that day was such a great day. 
It was such a wonderful day, such a great experience, such a fun time. But the minute that it was time to separate, the minute that things weren't going the way that I felt like they should be going or that my son felt like they should be going, we had a little bit of an issue. You're making me nervous. Where are you going? Despite how much I had been there and I've been there his entire life, despite how much, how many good times that we've had together, despite all of the great things, including spending 13 hours in an RC car store, pretending to buy RC cars from the expensive RC cars to the little minute ones that cost 30 bucks. Despite all of this, it was in the moment that he felt unsafe that he began to question, really, am I coming back? Will you be back? Where are you going? This was, this was perfect. Why, why can't, where, where you at? Do this all the, be here with me, next to me, all the time. Dad, where, where, where are you going? And despite the fact that you have to leave, I, I know you're leaving, but can you just, can you, can, can you come back? And if you do have to leave, I get and understand that you may have to leave, but in that moment, please do me a favor. Hurry up. And so what, ha what I have found um, in this moment are kind of a couple things that I wanted to talk to you all or share with you all today in regards to my testimony. And I promise I won't be long. I won't, I won't take all day here. Um, but the number one thing is we have to understand the why. Why was COVID sad? Well, Coven was sad uh, because he wanted to know where I'm going and am I coming back. There's two sides to this story. Well, then you have to look at why dad was sad. Well, dad was sad because no matter how much I reassured him, he still struggled. And so the number one thing I want to share with you all is that in these moments where you feel like you're in these Deep times, these fire times, these oppressed times, these hard times. The number one thing I want to share with you is that fear is normal. Fear is normal. Much like my son, we oftentimes get into these moments and situations where it questions our faith or really contradicts it and we begin to wonder why. Or we begin to think. And we get a little nervous because everything that was perfect all of a sudden isn't perfect anymore. And how long until I can get back to perfect? Fear is normal. That's the purpose of faith. The purpose of faith is being able in these fearful moments to know that there is a plan for you. In the scripture, he said, I have made you mine. I love you. I care for you. So even in these deep and rough what, don't you worry about it. I got you. I have you. You must live by those words. That's number one. Fear is normal. And I'm fearful that he that he thinks I'm going to neglect him and he's fearful that I'm never going to come back. Which leads to point number two. A lot of times we confuse absence with neglect. Absence with neglect. Now absence is defined literally as the state of being away from a person or a place. No positive connotation or negative connotation no it's just an objective fact that you're away from a place neglect is defined as the failure to care for properly and so what happens in this situation is that sometimes we can confuse God's absence in our life or Jesus's absence in our life with neglect which leads us to now wonder and question where we're going what we're doing who are we going to lead who are we following because we just don't see his presence. Don't confuse absence with neglect. See, my son had an idea in his head that there may be something going on, that there may be something that's not going to work the right way, that there may be something that's going to, to, to bother me, that's going to bother There may be something that will lead him to believe that I won't return or fail to care for him properly. The country song out now um, that that's about uh, a, a man and he tells his son that I'm leaving, but I'll be right here. And that's what Christ says to us in the scripture. Don't matter where you go, no matter where you go, know that I am here. I'm here. I'm here. So number one, fear is normal. Situations cause 
us to be fearful all the time. Fear is normal, but that's why we have faith. Number two, don't confuse absence with neglect because you may be fearful that you that you don't see him, that, that, that it isn't as comfortable as it once was, that it isn't the perfect situation that I thought it to be. And, and then you may say, well, he's not here, so he really doesn't care. And that's where the people who aren't believers want you to believe that your God is a fallacy or your God is a falsehood. Don't confuse absence with neglect. It's not neglectful. What does he say? In the scripture, he didn't say to them, hey, I, I promise you, I promise you, you'll see me all the time. He says, I will be with you. When you go through difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk, you won't be burned up. It won't consume you. You are honored and I love you. He didn't say you would physically see me. He says, I got you. Which leads to my last part. My son had the greatest smile on my face when I picked him up. I said, son, I'll pick you up as soon as I get back. And when I picked him up, it's the greatest smile. It's the smile that we all look and yearn for. But that took time. It took time. It took reassurance to him. It took his faith and belief in me that I was going to actually show up. How often do we fall into this conundrum of believing that in this pit of fire, he's nowhere to be found? In this moment, we can't find him. How often do we think about that? But how many times have you been able to say, goodness gracious, look where he is. Old Southern Baptist hymnal said, you may not call when you want him, but it'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Mm, 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 mm. That's old school. But it's true. It's that he may not be there exactly when you want him to be. And the good time may not seem like it's going to last. But the reason that we commit our faith is because we believe. And we hold on. So faith is built. And commitment comes with patience and time. Believe that he'll show up. Believe that he's with you in these difficult waters. Believe that you won't be consumed by the fire of burning oppression, of burning depression, of burning guilt, of burning sorrow. Believe that you won't be. I promise you, you won't. He's committed to us here. Lastly, if we look at um, Hebrew 13, 5, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, uh, this is important. Because this is the epitome of faith. He says, don't, don't love money. <laughs> be, satisfied, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said this to you. He says, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. So I know it gets uncomfortable. I know we get in these moments that we need reassurance and we want these times and we want this good time to keep rolling and rolling, but inevitably it is life and these challenges make us stronger. I just want to guarantee you three things. Don't be feared. Don't understand that fear is normal. Lastly, if we look at um, Hebrew 13, 5, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, uh, this is important because this is the epitome of faith. He says, don't, don't love money. <laughs> be satisfied, be satisfied with what you have for God has said this to you. He says, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. So I know it gets uncomfortable. I know we get in these moments that we need reassurance and we want these times and we want this good time to keep rolling and rolling, but inevitably it is life and these challenges make us stronger. I just want to guarantee you three things. Don't be fear. Don't understand that fear is normal. Don't run. Fear is normal. That's the purpose of faith. Number two, don't, it, don't it confuse or mix absence with neglect. It doesn't happen that way. Just because you can't physically see Jesus or physically see his works does not mean that he's not working, which is a failure to care properly. He says, I'll be with you. I love you. I honored you. You declared me as yours. I got you. I didn't say it was going to be pretty or feel good, but just know that I got you. And lastly, most importantly, understand that faith and commitment takes patience and time. And we can rest assured knowing 
that he said, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. So understand one thing and one thing only. When you look around to the north, the south, the east, and the west, and you feel like you can't find him, when you look at friends and when you look at the, the burning pit or you're going through the difficult waters, just know you can find comfort in these two words. I'm here. He may not look like you want him to look. He may not feel the way you want him to feel. But I want you to understand that he is committed to us. And it's been so evident in my life. This situation with my son was just kind of a microcosm of all of us as children of God. And that when the good times roll, we're good. But the minute that something doesn't seem right, we start to ask questions, be fearful, wonder if he's coming back. But just be patient. Take a little time. Be committed. Have faith. Because ultimately, he's told me, and we'll tell you, I'm here. Dear God, I thank you so much for who you are in our lives. I thank you for um, the men, women, children, grandfathers, uncles, guardians, the people who needed to hear this message today. God, I thank you for using me to allow me to send this message. God, we love you so much for who you are and for the things yet unseen. Allow us to be patient. Allow us to be firm in our belief that you have not neglected us, despite the physical absence. Jesus, we love you for who you are. Allow us to understand that fear may be normal, but grace has already been measured by you. Thank you, God, for who you are. I pray for those who are less fortunate, for those who are struggling. May they use this word to find you. In Jesus' precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen, good people. Uh, this is where I would say my goodbyes. Give you an air hug. Mm. Everybody gets air hug. Mm. 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 All good there. Okay. We'll talk soon.